Listen, last week we we read uh, some scriptures. We came out of um, uh, John, First John, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. I want you to go back there again and let's work on this text in First John, the fourth chapter and verse four. He says, "Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." So last week, you know, he was speaking of those that were operating in error, those that were not speaking the truth. And that's what's happening in our world now, as well as it was back then. There are things we have to overcome. In the same book of John, he says about this is our victory, even our faith, is that we overcome the world. And we thank God for that victory he has given us to overcome them. Note the text in the King James, a new King James. He says, for ye are of God, uh, little children and have overcome them. You are from God, is what the NIV would say. We are from God. God is our Father, and we have overcoming this world that we're living in. Let me go back and put this to your mind before we move on to the lesson. The circumstances in our world that we are challenged with right now, he speaks to us and wants us to know that our authority is in Christ. Our victory is in Christ. It's the fullness of everything that comes through Christ that we have to stop worrying and stressing about the things that are going on around us in the world, which is not an easy thing to do, but something that what we must do to pull our emotions in. Don't let human circumstances, is what the writer is teaching us, drive us out of our faith and out of control, but allow circumstances to come under control about the greatness that's inside of you and that's inside of me. We look at things not and worry about things or be full of anxiety about things, but we allow Christ's peace. That's where I'm trying to get you to, to settle us down from that greatness that's inside of us. This peace, this peace is proof of our victory. That peace lets me know that I can trust God in whatever I'm facing and whatever I'm going through. Uh, we see in Matthew's gospel, the eighth chapter in verse 23 to 27, if I would give you a thought to that scripture, we look at Jesus' authority as he speaks to the violent storms, the winds that are blowing in that text. And he asked the disciples to get on the boat with him. And as soon as they got on the boat with Jesus, uprise this, this storm. As soon as you start trying to make forward progress, you always got a furious storm that comes up that disturbs your peace and gets you to start feeling like you're not going to make it to the other side. You must remember, they didn't get on the boat with just anybody. They got on the boat with Jesus. And he said, let's go over to the other side. It, it is Satan's arsenal to come with fear, worry, doubt, and watch this, self-pity. He wants us to feel if, if we're defeated, but we are of God. And greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Story goes on when Jesus gets to the other side. He speak, stands up and speaks to the wind and speaks to the waves and did not allow his emotions to get involved with this storm. But he allowed himself to tell that storm to lay down, to be peace, he, to come to peace. He can speak to the elements. He can speak also into our lives and cause things that are troubling us to lay down. Um, every weapon the enemy uses, he tries to rob us of our peace and leave us troubled on the inside. Leave us to the place where we're overly concerned about things that we know that God has under full control. Coming into a perfect relationship with Jesus Christ helps me to settle down in this peaceful place. It's whenever I don't have peace, then I have war. And that brings confusion. Um, Counterwise, when I have peace on the inside, I walk in that peace, and that peace is with Christ. Philippians 1.28. He speaks over there in, in the NIV, and, and he says, he says, and not any in any way terrified. Philippians 1.28, catch this. Not in any way terrified or frightened by the adversary uh, of the opposing force, which is to them of a proof of perdition or ruin, destruction, but to you of salvation and that of God. It's a tricky script, scripture if you're listening close to me, but it's not that confusing. Let me take out my inserts and let you read it as it is. And not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof of perdition, um, but to you of salvation and that of God. See. The writer in Philippians is saying that 
When your adversaries see that you're not terrified, it's a proof of their destruction because you understand salvation is inside of you. You don't let them see you sweating. You don't let the outside circumstances terrorize you. This peace that you have, it's unmovable because you're standing on the word of God, not in any way terrified. I'm standing on that word, believing this word that it is settled in my heart that greatness is in me and there's greatness in you. I submit myself to the will of God and I am not allowing things to alarm me or any sign given to the adversary that I am alarmed. I'm at peace. Let me tell you a quick story. True story. This happened back in 1996. I lived in Los Angeles. I was working as a contractor. And over in Los Angeles, there's a street called Vermont Street. And some people know, the LA, you LA, Los Angeles people, and Joe Little's people, that Vermont Street and those, those areas over there around 32nd, 34th, and 35th, all in that South Central area was very hostile back in those days in the early and mid 80s, late 80s. So the construction job was over there. I had to work on that job. And it was an alley in between both of the projects. We were building a duplex on one street and building one on the second street, talking about peace, talking about there's greatness in you. I had to go through the alley to get over to the next job site. It was no more than maybe 50 feet. But can you imagine if you lived in Los Angeles, you're on Vermont Street, you're around 34th and 32nd, and you're over there working and as quiet as can be. The alleys were where all the movement went on. I had to go through that alley to get to the next street. And every time I walked out of one project to the next one, when I hit that alley, fear hit me, like somebody gonna kill you, somebody gonna take you out, you're not gonna make it home. I worked on that job for almost six months, but I'm sitting here in front of you right now because greatness is in you and it's also in me. It was a fearful time, but I had to walk and face that fear. I had to realize that God's hand is on me. I had to take care of my family. I had to work, so I could not operate out of fear. Oh, I prayed every day. And believe me, every time I hit that alley, I was praying and singing that I would get to the next job. At the end of it, the, the facilities were occupied. I got off that job, went to the next job, and life goes on. We walk through very turbulent times, but when God's greatness is on your life, his hand is covering you, you will get to your destination. This peace is also spirit power. Stay with me. This peace, the spirit power that he gives, it comes to the peacemakers. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You get that? You are sons and daughters of God. You are peacemakers. Where God goes, you go. Where he goes, you go. Where he is, you are. He's the head. We are the body, and he is moving us with him. A continuous movement of fearlessness and boldness and calmness, <clears throat> excuse me, is surrounding the child of God. It is in the battle of life that the peace of God becomes your weapon. Say that slow. It is in the battle of life that the peace of God becomes your weapon. Your confidence is declaring that God is with me and God cannot lie. And I won't receive the lies of the enemy telling me that I'm not good enough, I'm not qualified, and God's not going to help me. He promised to help me. He promised to help you also, and he's going to do that. <clears throat> Watch this. Jesus speaks to us in Luke's gospel and the fourth chapter, and I'm going to move through this in thought. You can read it at your leisure. But here Jesus is now being confronted by the devil, and the enemy is coming now to, to test him, to tempt him. And he, Jesus did not face the devil with his emotions nor his fear. But he got up and began to look, look at the enemy that was talking to him, refused to be influenced by the enemy, but to be influenced by God. It is when Jesus was just fasting, coming off that fast, and now the enemy comes and bring him bread, the lust of the flesh, the natural need. Then he brings him the ideal of power and glory. That's the lust of the eye. Then he brings him the spirit of suicide. Cast yourself down and destroy yourselves. Jesus here looks at the enemy and knew that greatness was in him. The enemy ain't trying to fight where there ain't no greatness. He wants some spoils and he wants your soul, but he can't have it. Jesus tells him it is written. 
He says, I cannot live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And he tells Satan to get behind him. Some of you all need to start telling the devil to get behind you and to leave you alone. Satan, the Bible says in Luke 4, left Jesus for a season. It's the enemy's job. He'll go away for a while, but he's going to come back to see if you're still standing on God's word and you'll be standing. That spirit power that gives peace. Shatter the enemy and send the enemy running and fleeing. It is in this that we see there's an assurance, not in oneself, but in God. Jesus knew what to say, and we're following his instructions to tell the enemy, get behind me. Isaiah 26 and 3, he says, I will keep him or guard him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me or stayed on you. I'm trusting in the Lord. Isaiah knew that our peace must be in whom we're looking to. He said that God will keep us in perfect peace. That's the greatness that's within us, that peace that settles within our hearts. David declares this peace, and he declares it in the same manner. I want you to see in Psalms 23 and verse 4. David declares this peace. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Some of you probably were with me Sunday. You probably heard some of this. He says, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God is with us. David says, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He knew here that God was taking him through something else. There is a place where you walk with God where you simply fear no evil. I said, there is a place we get to where we walk with God, where we simply fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. God is with me. David says to us, I've been in a few battles, been through a few tests. I fought with a lion and a bear and a giant. He said, but now I realize that life has not been easy. Now I'm at a place where I'm dealing with a shadow of death, some unseen enemy. I can't figure this one out. What is God really doing and saying right now? What is this reflection that's coming upon me? Yet I will fear no evil because thou art with me. God is with me. If God is with me, the adversary that I'm facing, it may be bigger than me, but it's not bigger than my God. It might be a surprise to me, but it's not a surprise to my God. Listen, go on in that same 23rd Psalms. David says that in verse 5, Therefore, the Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. The battles that you have been fighting will soon become the meals you're going to enjoy. The things the enemy that been trying to destroy you with will give you the experience to nourish you and build you up spiritually. It will fill you up to the point that you'll be fueled with power from on high, turning you from defeat into victory. The battle is turning right now. Is moving to your favor because you're walking in the authority of the greatness that's inside of you. I see walls falling. I see the enemy being defeated on every side because the greatness that's inside of you. The source of this peace that we get tonight is because of the peace that comes from God himself. And we are, according to Ephesians 2 and 19, we are citizens of the household of God. We are in a different class, church. We're in a different atmosphere. We are of the household of God. We are no, we are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. Greatness is in you. He says to us, does this to us because we understand our personal relationship is now with God. A relationship knows that we're not struggling whether or not we're going to heaven or do we have Christ inside of us. We know, according to John 3 and 3, that except the man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We know that the new birth comes by a new birth experience. John 3 and 5, he said, except the man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot see or cannot enter 
into the kingdom of God. You have been born again. That I'm getting to it. Come on. I'm getting to let you see the greatness that's within you. It's because you've been born again. The enemy is attacking because he understands there is greatness inside of you. And being born again of water and of spirit, watch it, of salvation and of spiritual baptism. This birth comes from the top. It comes from heaven. You are a citizen and residence in heaven. I know you got an address and an apartment number you, you live by in a P.O. box, but your citizenship is in heaven. Watch this. He says that this salvation comes to us and it gives us spirit power. And this spirit power gives us a song. The song is sang in Isaiah 12 and 3. He says, therefore, with joy, I will draw waters from the wells of salvation. What a promise to know the greatness can be refueled. It's constantly being refueled inside the believer. You're getting fueled tonight by the word of God. Hang with me. I got a few more moments, but I got to get you this message over to you. You're being fueled by the word of God. And now with joy, this is a, a prophetic message for Israel in the future, but it's also for us right now. With joy, you will draw waters out of the from the wells of salvation this promise of living water comes out of saint john the seventh chapter jesus stands up at the last day of the feast and said that if any man thirsts if you're really eager for me you are craving for me he said let him come that means a complete surrendering and you come you can drink of these waters. You can drink with your wholehearted commitment to the Lord. I only want you. He said, and believe on me as the scripture said, out of your belly shall flow. Stay with me. Catch the lesson. Greatness is in you. Now the belly is flowing out of living waters, an unlimited supply, an, an unlimited supply of power of the work to do the work of God is flowing out of you and flowing out of me. What kind of water is it? It's living water, rivers of living water. A continuous flow of spirit power is flowing in the church right now. The worst thing the devil could have did is try to put us in a desert. We were born to go through this church, and that's when we tap into the source that's in us that the enemy can't get to. Watch what he says over in John 7. He says there in verse 39, he said, By this he spake of the Spirit, because for which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So he's speaking prophetically. John, that wrote St. John, now writes 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, talks about this same Spirit. Watch this. This spirit that he talks about now has come and it has taken up it has taken up residence inside of you and I this spirit he says you will be endued with power from on high you will be engulfed with this spirit from on high this heavenly backing is coming to you right now the spirit that ascended came down that when Jesus went up sent back that spirit but now it's residing within the church and in the believer that's the spirit power that lives inside of us those of you and I that have been born again it is Christ that lives in us and Christ also lives in us and we live in him because we have been born a new born again to the fullness of the Holy Spirit we have this salvation Peter said in Acts 4 he said he said this man is standing here but he's standing here because of the power of Jesus Christ he said that stone that you all had rejected in the fourth chapter of Acts he said this person has become the chief cornerstone and Acts 4 and 12 he says neither is there salvation in any other for there's no other name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved and and that salvation comes through Jesus Christ. Now, watch this. The power that we've set in tonight is clearly seen better in Psalms 110 and verse 1. What's the reading? The Lord said to my Lord, or Yahweh, the Lord, God, Jehovah, God said to my Lord, the Messiah, sit thou to my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. There's greatness in you. The devil knows it. He says, I'm going to make your enemy your stump place to stump upon, to step upon, to stump and put your foot up on. Sit here, Messiah, till I make your enemies your footstool, recognizing that it is not me that the devil is fighting or trying to get. He's trying to get that greatness that's inside of me, which is Christ. He's 
When he fight in a battle, he can't move. Yahweh tells the Messiah, sit here till I make your enemy your stumping ground. I wish I could get somebody to stump your feet in that house over there. Stump to know that the enemy is under your feet. Remember what he said to us in Ephesians. We are Ephesians 2 and 6. And we have been raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Did you, did you miss it? Uh, Psalms 110 and verse 1, sit till I make your enemies your footstool. And in Ephesians 2 and 6, we were raised up together, sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are in a unique class because we have greatness inside of us. We become a worshiper then because we know that as we worship God, we draw him into our presence. The battle come now becomes the wage against us, but the more we worship, the more we go into his presence, sitting at the right hand or sitting with Christ and we're knowing that the enemy is already our footstool. He is under our feet. We can stump on everything the devil is trying to do because Christ has given us the power to do this. Watch it in Psalms 110 and verse two. And I'm about to close. Watch this. He says, the Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Ruly, ru, to rule in the midst of your enemy. Let me read it again. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Zion is the church of Jerusalem. There is a ruler coming, ruling in the midst of your enemies. Say it one more time. The Lord is sending a ruler to bring things back in order. That rod is Christ himself that lives inside of us to make your enemies. He's going to rule in the midst of your enemies. Look at God here now telling us, I'm going to allow you to stump the enemy under you because you are in me and I am in you. And the greatness that's within you can put the enemy under your feet. Every bit of doubt, fear, anxiety, worry, lack, whatever it is, it's going under your foot tonight. You have the power to tell the devil, get under my feet. And every time you stump him down, he cannot raise his head back up. Look what he says to Asher over in Deuteronomy 33. 24 to 25. You are walking in victory, Asher. He talked about Dan, Nethali, and also Gad. They were the blessed children of Jacob. But Asher, he says, which means happy, he says, most blessed son are you. Let you be favored of, of your brethren, and let him dip his feet in oil. Asher was one that walked in the authority of dipping his feet in oil. We have the blessings of Asher resting upon us. Dipping your feet in oil means that you dip your feet in prosperity. You're so blessed, you don't know how blessed you are because of the greatness that's within inside of you. He says, your sandals shall be iron and brass. And as your days, so shall your strength be, Asher. You're going to have strength to fight the battle all the way to the end. Every day you wake up, you're going to be renewed with greater strength and greater power because that's what Christ is doing in the life of the believer. Submitting myself to God, resisting the devil and watching him flee. I know that I rest and I proceed to rule. After peace comes power. I submit everything to God. Resist the devil and watch him begin to flee. I pray tonight that the presence of the Holy Spirit will continue to fuel you, rest upon you, give you peace, resting you in victory, giving you victory over everything the enemy is throwing at you, ruling over your enemy. May the Lord's grace, may his mercy and goodness follow you all the days of your life. May his power pursue before you, going before you and coming behind you. May God give you the knowledge and understanding of who you are in him to know that you're not an average child of God. You are a great child of God because you got a great daddy, a great father, and there is greatness as you. One of y'all can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. The enemy knows he's fighting a losing battle. And I thank God for the victory through Jesus Christ. There is greatness in you. Bless you. Bless you. There's greatness in you. See it in yourself. Understand the purpose of God in your life. Understand the power of God that's working in your life. Settle it in your mind. I know Christ loved me. I know I'm born again. I know I have power on the inside and I can tap into what God has given me. And I'm so glad he is fighting with me and fighting for me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this word tonight. I pray that it moves through this airways and touch someone's heart. 
and those that are seeking salvation will find it in the name of Jesus. Give us hope that make us not ashamed because your love is set in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Build us up, strengthen us up, lift us up in the name of Jesus. I dispel fear, worry, and anxiety and doubt in the name of Jesus. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen.